I said, we're going to be in Jeremiah chapter 29. So if you've got your copy of God's Word, Jeremiah chapter 29, beginning in verse 15. We are going to talk tonight about false prophets. False prophets. Now, there's a reason Jeremiah is addressing this where he is. If you will remember at the first part of this chapter, what had happened is that Jeremiah had sent a message by a letter. He'd sent this letter off to people that had been taken captive and enslaved, taken away from their homeland, and taken to Babylon. And they were many, many miles away, and they were hoping and thinking and maybe even praying that their captivity would end soon and their, their time of suffering would come to an end and they would soon know a life of ease back home where they wanted to be. Jeremiah's word to them from God was, it's going to be 70 years. I will bring you back, but it's going to be 70 years of captivity before that happens. And so, after the letter arrives, God has given truth, but the devil has a counter. The devil has a lie. The devil has something that he wants to push and promote. But if the devil's lie is believed and the truth is not followed, then what God had said early on in this chapter, words like, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Uh, that word is going to be pushed aside because instead of the people following God and obeying God's will and seeking after God, they're just going to be hoping in a lie that the false prophets uh, have given them and they're going to miss out on God's plan because God's plan was for them to build houses, plant gardens, start businesses, to do things that would allow them to prosper, to pray for the prosperity of the land that they were in because it's going to be a long time before they come home. And if they're thinking, well, we're getting out of here quickly, they're not going to do the things God's called them to do and they're going to miss out on God's perfect will for them as best that they could have a good life where they were. They were going to miss it. And so the devil had a lie that he was trying to promote. And he was using false prophets to do it. And so we're going to look tonight at what Jeremiah has to say to the people about the false prophets. Now you may be thinking right now, what in the world do I care about false prophets in the Old Testament? Well, they're still around today. There are a lot of people that promote lies instead of truth. Uh, they peddle things that will tickle people's ears, make them happy, make them uh, feel like good is coming when it may be that bad is coming. They will say things that people want to hear instead of what they need to hear very often. And because of that, they have crowds, they have followings, they have a lot of money sometimes that comes their way. It allows them to get on TV, become very successful, get a lot of money given or sent to them. And they're looking for that. They're looking for people to acclaim them and to enrich them. Well, same thing they were looking for back in this day. But if you are told a lie and you believe a lie, it's going to ruin you. And God wants you to not be ruined, but to have hope. And so let me read the first few verses here, and then we're going to take this section by section because it's kind of long. We're going to begin in verse 15. The Bible says this, Jeremiah chapter 29, Because you have said the Lord has raised up prophets for us, in Babylon. For thus says the Lord concerning the king who sits on the throne of David and concerning the people who dwell in this city, your brothers who did not go with you in exile, thus says the Lord of hosts, behold, I am sending upon them the sword, famine, and pestilence, and I will make them like split open figs that cannot be eaten due to rottenness. And I will pursue them with the sword and with famine and with pestilence. And I will make them a terror to all the kingdoms of the earth to be a curse and a horror and a hissing and a reproach among the nations where I have driven them because they have not listened to my voice, declares the Lord, which I sent to them again and again by my servants, the prophets. But you didn't listen, declares the Lord. You therefore hear the word of the Lord, all you exiles whom I have sent away 
from Jerusalem to Babylon. Now, the first thing I want you to see about false prophets is if you follow a false prophet, you're going to have a false hope, a false hope that is going to lead you into ruin. The ones that were exiled in Babylon, the ones that had been taken away and enslaved that were hoping to come back home were not going to have a home to return to. Jeremiah is preaching what God promised. If you go back into the book of Deuteronomy, and when you're referencing Deuteronomy, what are we talking about? This is covenant language. God made a covenant with the nation of Israel and said, if you follow me and you honor me, I will bless you. But if you don't, I will curse you. And God listed the curses over and over again. They are given here again. Verse 18, the sword, famine, pestilence, so disease and starvation and warfare are all going to come. And in the end, Jerusalem is going to be wiped off. I mean, just going to be destroyed, and the people are going to be killed, or they will be taken away and enslaved. All but a remnant will remain, and in the end, they're all going to be gone. And you'll see how it unfolds as time comes to pass. But right now, just know that the exiles are hoping to get out really soon and return home, and there's not going to be a home to return to. They were going to have a false hope if they listened to Jeremiah. Again, there are false prophets in that day as well as in this day. And the same thing is true. They lead many astray and they give a false hope. You know, back in 1988, there was a book written, 88 Reasons the Rapture is Going to Occur in 1988. It's false hope. Just a few years ago, there was a book written about the four blood moons and the end of the world. We're still here. False hopes. They made a lot of money, sold a lot of books. Didn't give a lot of truth. Uh, There are people that get on TV all the time and say, God told me. Be careful. Now, I know God speaks here. This is, without a doubt, the Word of God. But there are times when people stand up and they say, this will happen. God has told me. And if you watch, a lot of times it doesn't go the way they said it was going to go. And if, because you know a broken clock is right twice a day anyway, if every now and then they get one right, they'll still get nine more wrong. You just got to be careful who you listen to. There are false prophets. Now, as we go through this section, there's a warning that we need to heed against becoming one. This is a warning that's going to go against all false prophets because you're going to see that their judgment is going to be very severe. And it's uh, something for us to get to grasp onto to think about that because when we see these false prophets, we're going to see them rise up in our day. As we get closer to the end, we don't know when that's going to be, but the closer to the end you go, the more the false prophets are going to come onto the scene, and it's easy to get disheartened when you see people acting in this sort of way, but we know that in God's time, God's going to get them. But the Word of God is, is the trump card for everything, and the Word of God is greater than anything, any other message that comes from anyone, anywhere, at any time. So you always want to take and compare and contrast what you hear with what's written in the Word. I told you about the book of Deuteronomy just a minute ago. The book of Deuteronomy, for instance, talks about false prophets. And in chapter 13, it says this. If there is someone that rises on the scene, a dreamer of dreams, or someone that conveys a prophecy, and then they back that prophecy up with signs and miracles. That's powerful, isn't it? Signs and miracles to back up the prophecy. If it contradicts God's word, You don't listen to them. Uh, That can happen. And in the last days, what does the book of Revelation say is going to happen? There's going to be a false prophet, and there will be other false prophets that direct you to follow not Jesus, but the beast, a false god that's going to come onto the scene, someone that's going to proclaim himself to be God, and there will be many that come on the scene that proclaim, this is God, you need to worship him. And they will have miracles to back them up. The Word of God is 
greater than all of them. So you don't need to listen even if the miracles are there. The devil can do supernatural sort of miracles. He has some sort of power. It's not like God's power, but he's got some. There, there's always a counterfeit to the real thing. There's a phony and a fraud where there's something that's real. We need what is real and not what is false. So we go by what the Word of God says. And the Word of God had come through Jeremiah. Jeremiah's word was, exiles, you need to stay where you are. You need to plan on being there a long time. And the people that are back in Jerusalem, they are going to be wiped out. They are not going to have good days in front of them. They're going to have bad days. But if you listen to the false prophets that are saying, don't worry about that. It's all going to be okay. You're going to have a false hope. They'll trust in a false deliverance and a false escape and a different kind of salvation that they're looking than what God's going to provide. And in the end, Jerusalem's going to be ruined. I mean, verse 17, I'm going to make them like split open figs, rotten fruit that is so rotten. It's just, have you ever seen rotten fruit? It's on the ground, it's bust open, it's brown and nasty, and it's not good for anything. He says they're going to be like that. There was no real hope, no real peace there. But if the false prophets are believed, the people were going to not obey what Jeremiah had taught. And so you always have to be careful. I mean, there's a big difference in hearing Jesus will return and somebody standing up and saying Jesus will return Christmas Day. Now, one is true. The other probably isn't. It could be. But we're not supposed to look for dates. And times. We're just supposed to be ready whenever he does come. Uh, we're not supposed to listen to people that say, I've figured it out. There's a secret code in the Bible, and I've looked in it, and I've discovered it, and I've found out that I know the exact date when Jesus is going to return. See, one is biblical. Jesus is alive. He's coming back again. We're going to need to be ready to meet him. And another is just somebody putting on a show. I know when he's going to come back. I'll tell you the exact day. I mean, it's one thing to say have faith, and it's another thing to say have faith, and everything you ask God for is he going to give you. One's true, the other one's not. But there are people that have name it and claim it philosophies and theologies, and it's not real. And so you have to be careful what you listen to. You have to be careful what you read. I mean, somebody put out a book a few years ago that says, Heaven is for real. Hey, little kids died and gone there and come back. We got a book written all about that. I think that's kind of how it went. I know heaven's for real because the Word of God tells me it's real. I, I don't need a, a fraud to claim to have died and come back and have visited heaven. Heaven's for real because the Word of God is true, and it tells us heaven is real. And so you base what you believe on that because in that book, there were a lot of things that were completely different from what the Word of God says heaven is like. So be careful. False prophets give you a false hope. The false hope doesn't help. It in the end, it can destroy you. But there's something else about false prophets. False prophets are on God's bad list, if you want to say that. They are known by God. Look what verse 21 says about the false prophets. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, concerning Ahab, the son of Coliah, and concerning Zedekiah, the son of Maaseiah, who are prophesying to you falsely in my name. Now, here's the first thing you want to notice. God knows their names. Calls them out by name. Boy, I'd hate to be on God's bad list and him put me in the Bible, but he did it for them. I'd hate to be on God's bad list, period, but have your name listed in the Bible, oh boy. God knows what's going on. He knows what they say. He knows what he does. God can call them by name and say exactly who they are. So they're known by God, and their message is heard. Look what it says. They prophesy falsely to you in my name. Behold, I will deliver them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall slay them before your eyes. And because of them, a curse shall be used by all the exiles from Judah who are in Babylon, saying, May the Lord make you like Zedekiah and like Ahab, whom the king of Babylon roasted in the fire so God heard their message and God judged them and God's punishment to them was going to be 
Nebuchadnezzar's going to find out what they're saying. He's going to throw them in the fire. Now, do you remember who Nebuchadnezzar is? That's the king of Babylon. If you ever read the book of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do you remember what happened to them? They got thrown into the fiery furnace. If you got on a king's bad list back in the day, they just burn you alive. So these two guys are preaching a message. What do you think their message is they're preaching? Babylon's going to fall. Slaves are going to get free. You're going to get to go back home. And God got tired of them doing it. So God let the king get word of what's going to happen. And God's judgment is that he's going to let the king, Nebuchadnezzar, destroy them. They get thrown into the fire. Kind of symbolic there. They are judged and condemned. But they're not just judged and condemned by Nebuchadnezzar. They're also judged and condemned like by God. Uh, look what God says they're doing. God doesn't just know their name and listen to their message, but if you keep reading, what you find out is that after they had this proverb about them, may the Lord make you like Zedekiah and Ahab and the king of Babylon roast in the fire, he starts telling you exactly what they did. Because, verse 23, they acted foolishly in Israel. Number two, they committed adultery with their neighbor's wives. Big time problem in Israel back in that day. Jeremiah listed over and over again, well, these men that were prophets... Right? Holy men committing adultery with neighbors' wives. You will find very often that people, especially in cults, people who give you a false message and a message contradictory to the Word of God, you'll often find sexual sin goes hand in hand with their life. Um, from Mormonism and the founder who was with a lot of men's wives, Joseph Smith. I'm trying to think of the name that went down to Guyana, Guyana down in uh, Jones, yeah. Jim Jones, y'all know who I'm talking about. False prophet, wasn't he? And uh, abusing people. and it, it just goes all over. I mean, if you just watch long enough, you'll find out that they get power, they get control, they get mastery over people, then they use and abuse people to satisfy their fleshly nature and their desires. They commit adultery with their neighbor's wives. And number three, they have spoken words in my name falsely. We've talked about this a lot, but there are a lot of groups out there that use the Bible, and they use the name Jesus, but they don't believe or practice what's in the Bible, and they don't. when they say Jesus, they don't mean what we mean. Uh, they have another idea for Jesus, and it's not truth. It's a lie. About the Mormons, I could say that that's true about them. They call themselves a church. Uh, you could say the same, same thing about the Jehovah's Witnesses. They speak words in my name. They use the name of God. They're blaspheming. That's what they're doing. Because they're saying, God and God and God, the Lord, Jehovah. And it gives them credibility, doesn't it? I'm going to throw God's name around and it makes me sound spiritual and it makes me sound religious and like somebody that needs to be listened to. They say words in my name falsely. It's a warning for us, church. You don't just listen to what people say. Watch what they do. If they're committing adultery, that's a good sign. They're not legitimate. And if they're using the name God or Lord or Jesus or church or Bible, they can use it falsely. So be warned. Be careful. Just because that's going on, just like the miracles we talked about before, even if you had miracles that were behind what they were saying, if they are contradicting the Word of God, you believe this over them. So they acted foolishly, committed adultery, they spoke words in my name falsely, and I did not command them to do it, God said. They will claim to have been sent from God, and it's a lie. And I am He, God says, who knows and am a witness, declares the Lord. So false prophets are known by God, and false prophets give a false hope. Now, I'll give you one more thing here, and then we're just about done. False prophets also oppose God. Now, let me tell you how they're going to oppose God. They oppose God by opposing God's man, and here that's Jeremiah. They oppose God's people, and they oppose God's truth. Listen to what Jeremiah writes, beginning in verse 24, And to Shimeiah, 
and to, I'm sorry, Shimei the Nihalamite. <laughs> I could probably say that better if I had my glasses on. Nihalamite, you shall speak, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, God of Israel, because you have sent letters in your own name to all the people who are in Jerusalem and to Zephaniah, the son of Maaseiah, the priest, to all the priests, saying, The Lord has made you priest instead of Jehoiada, the priest, to be the overseer in the house of the Lord, and over every madman who prophesies, to put him in the stocks and in the iron collar. Now then, why have you not rebuked Jeremiah of Anathoth, who prophesies to you? For he is sent to us in Babylon, saying, The exile will be long. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat their produce. Now, here's what's going on. Somebody sends a letter back home. Remember, Jeremiah's in Jerusalem. He sends a letter to Babylon. Well, somebody gets the letter in Babylon and doesn't like what the prophet of God says. So what are you going to do if you don't like what the word of God says? Well, you're going to try to shut it down. You're going to try to get it stopped. So he sends a letter back, but he doesn't send it to Jeremiah. He sends it to the guy that's in charge of the temple in Jerusalem. You're in charge here, buddy. This guy, Jeremiah, is saying some stuff that we don't like. You need to lock him up. Put him down. Shut him up. Use your power to quench the words coming out of his mouth. We don't want to hear it anymore. We don't want the people here to hear it. Hey, you know, people, they want to be encouraged here. It's sad over here. These people are far away from them. They need to hear a good word and a good message. We don't want to discourage them and make them feel like they're never getting out of here, never going home. But it's true. They did need to hear it because it was true. And they would rather tell a lie than tell the truth. And so what do they do? They use threats and lies and intimidation. They use physical pain. If they have power, they try to use it. But if they don't have power, they try to get people who are in power to stop, to use punishment, and loss of freedom, that's what's going on here. That's why so many people want their people in power, in office, politically. They want to get the judges on their side, and they want to get the politicians that believe like them and think like them so that they can, it doesn't matter what side you're on, both sides do it. But they want power so that they can use that power to get what they want. Well, that's what's going on here. There's a guy in power. And somebody wants him to use his power to shut Jeremiah down. The thing about people that promote and believe and promulgate lies is that they shut down the truth and they oppose it. These are opposing God by opposing God's man. And this hurts God's people. And in the end, it's against God himself. Watch out. Because they're around in this day too. And if they hear something they don't like, they'll try to oppose God's man or God's woman. They'll try to use power to stifle them, snuff them out, get them out of a place and a position where they can be an influence. The devil's always going to have a scheme or a plan to try to stop the work of God that's going on. And if God's people aren't mindful that there's an enemy that opposes, that's working against, and is going to try to destroy, then all of a sudden the devil can play with your mind and trick you and start to make you think, well, these lies might be true, and God's man might be bad, and what are we doing here? Try to get you on his side. Be careful. God's doing a work and God's giving a word, the enemy's out there. So in the end, here's what Jeremiah says about the false prophets, verse 29 through the end, and then we're done. And Zephaniah the priest read this letter to Jeremiah. So the letter comes, and Zephaniah, he decides to read it to Jeremiah. Hey, I got some mail, Jeremiah. Listen to what came in the mail today. And he reads this letter about wanting to, you know, put Jeremiah in the stocks and put an iron collar on him. And he uses his power to shut Jeremiah down and lock him up and lose his freedom. So I got this letter, Jeremiah. Let me read it to you. 
So verse 30, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Here's what he said. Send to all the exiles and say this. Thus says the Lord concerning Shemaiah, the Nehlamite, Nehel Nehelamite, oh, I need to practice that word, because Shemaiah has prophesied to you. So he's a false prophet, isn't he? And Jeremiah's word contradicts his word, and he sees it as competition. He's going to snuff out the competition. Because Shemaiah has prophesied to you, although I did not send him. That's God talking. God did not send this man. There are people that claim to speak for God that God did not send. He has made you trust in a lie. He's given them a false hope. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I am about to punish Shemaiah the Nehelamite, and his descendants. He shall not have anyone living among this people, and he shall not see the good that I am about to do to my people, declares the Lord, because he has preached rebellion against the Lord. In the end, false prophets are punished by God. That They are not God's people. They can expect judgment of God against them and the wrath of God to come. But they can do a lot of harm in the meantime. Now notice the first false prophets that God named, they were burned in a fire. God's judgment against this person is that he and his descendants are going to die. His name is going to be blotted out. And when God begins to do good to those people that are in Babylon and eventually begins to bring them back, he won't have a single person in his family that's a part of that. So God's judgment against him was a little bit different. But nevertheless, God's judgment comes against them. God's wrath is going to abide on him, and eventually God's going to take them out. But again, he does a lot of harm before that happens. We need to be careful who we listen to. We need to be mindful that these kinds of people are out there. Now, having said all that, let me just share with you the most important thing before we go. These false prophets upon whom the wrath of God abided. For the believer in Jesus Christ, for you there is now therefore no wrath or condemnation in Christ Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross, he died in your place to pay for your sin. If you've ever stood up before someone before and said, God told me something and you were telling the truth, not telling the truth, or if you've ever blasphemed by using God's name in vain like these prophets were doing, that you can be forgiven for that sin. There is no sin that you cannot be forgiven for in Christ Jesus. All our sin is paid for on the cross. He died in our place so that we don't have to die. He's risen from the dead. He's alive, and he's coming again. Anyone who puts their faith in Jesus can have freedom from their sin. It can be washed away, and you can be restored to God because the sin is removed. That's what Jesus does for us. Jesus is a true prophet. This Sunday morning, you're going to see three different prophecies Jesus makes. He's on the way to the cross. He's going to leave the upper room. He's just had a meal with his disciples. He's washed their feet. They've, they've spent time together. He's dismissed Judas. Judas is out. He's got his, his core group there. And Jesus is going to predict three different things, all that are going to happen. You're going to see that there's a real prophet, and he's God's son. He's going to die for our sins and rise again, just like he says. But there are others out there that aren't real. We need to know the difference. It means we need to know the word. And we need to be mindful of the enemy. Thank you, church. Let's pray. We'll be dismissed. Father.